So what we did in example two and three is we wrote a complex number in trig form. Well, what about writing a complex number in standard form? So standard form is just your A plus BI. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go backwards. And if you notice, given this um, complex number up here, eight is your R, and then you have a theta here and a theta here. So if we just list out your, or if we know how your R is and your theta, so if we say r is 8 and theta is equal to a 2 pi over 3, then by using our formulas that we were given a long time ago, uh, after example 1, where x is equal to your r cosine theta and where y is equal to your r sine of theta, then what we do is we just pop these numbers in and we're going to say x equals your r, which is an eight, times the cosine of, take out your theta and you plug in a two pi over three. And then over here for your y, that is just saying y is equal to your r, which is an eight, times the sine of, remember these are our, kind of like our horizontal vertical components that we did back, whoops, that we did back in six three. Um, <clears throat> 8 sine of your theta and your theta is a 2 pi over 3 so then we say x equals 8 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 well the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is a lovely negative 1 half which means your sine of 2 pi over 3 must be a positive radical 3 over 2 leave these in uh, exact values, don't change them into decimals, please. So here is your x and your y, so to write it as a complex number, all you're going to do is you're going to say z is equal to your real part, which is negative 4, plus your imaginary part, which is your 4 radical 3 i. And there is your complex number when you go from a trig form to complex form. Ba-booyah!